So I'm going to move on to Brent. Brent Carlson, who's the CEO of Corporate Capital. Uh, how are you, Brent? I'm doing good, Brad. How are you? All right. Thank you. So the first question that came in is what is, and I can appreciate this question, what is the best way to protect my assets from creditors? Right now, that's kind of high on everybody's mind, you know, the what if scenario. So what, what can they do to protect their assets? Well, there's different scenarios. We're, we're a full service uh, company that sets up corporations. We set up LLCs, partnerships. Um, there's different vehicles you can utilize to protect some of your assets that way. But the main uh, vehicle that, that we recommend is an asset protection trust. It's actually an irrevocable uh, trust that protects assets from you know, creditors and, and protects our clients the most. I see. And is this um, a revoke? Would this be a trust or a revocable trust, an irrevocable trust? What, what are you recommending? So the asset protection trust is an irrevocable trust. And here's why we recommend the irrevocable. Um, let's talk about the living trust. A, a lot of people, husbands, wives, um, if you have children, everyone, in my opinion, I'm a firm believer should have a living trust. A living trust is a revocable trust. So it makes sure that your health care and your power of attorney and your beneficiaries get your assets. But what happens if you get sued and something happens right now? You can actually be forced to, to liquidate and sell those assets inside of a living trust because it's revocable. The irrevocable asset protection trust, because it's irrevocable, protects the assets in the trust for, from any type of creditors or litigation. The one thing that we uh, tell our clients to make sure they understand is it does take two years for that trust to protect them because of the transfer of the asset. We record it, we make it public, and after that two years, it protects them with, because of that irrevocable feature. Okay. Um, one question is I am self employed. Do I need to incorporate to have a trust? No, no. Going back to, to what I mentioned as far as the, the living trust, I feel that any, any husband, any, any wife, anyone who has children should have um, a living trust. As far as incorporating, do you have to incorporate to have a trust? Absolutely not. Uh, let's talk about that, though, for a second. For our clients who do have a corporation or an LLC or a partnership, we will go over a scenario where they can have those shares uh, or certificates issued to them um, personally or have them issued to their trust. And you may have already answered this in a way. Uh, the question is, I have heard that trust can be complicated and expensive. One of the reasons I incorporated was to have for a protective shield for my personal assets. How is a trust better? So, if your business gets sued, then they can't, especially with Nevada, Wyoming, Delaware, there's statutes that we have when we set up corporations and LLCs that protect us as business owners. So if they go after the business, then they can't necessarily go after our personal assets. Uh, and that's what we tell our clients. But what happens in just most recently, I had a client in Florida who ran through a stop sign, not, not, very, not very fast, but he did hit someone on a bike. And so he is being sued personally. It had nothing to do with his construction business in Florida. Um, so people get confused with that. They think by setting up a corporation or an LLC, they're going to separate their assets. You are separating your, your, your business from your personal life. However, if you get sued personally, what do you have in place? And at that point, we have the, 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 the asset protection trust that we recommend. Now, what's unique is the asset protection trust, and, and, and I, I wanna talk about this, is very unique in Nevada. Now, all states offer different trusts, like the revocable living trust will be done in the state that they live in. This Nevada Asset Protection Trust is the state that we choose, we set it up in, because you can reside in any state. Um, there's some requirements that you have to have here in Nevada, which we fulfill for our clients. But by having it in Nevada, it offers the flexibility of an irrevocable trust with some unique revocable privileges. A lot of people, when they understand or their knowledge of an irrevocable trust, is it's very difficult to make changes, which is true. But Nevada offers a, a unique flexibility to where you have an irrevocable trust with some of those revocable privileges, so you're protecting the asset, but also being able to have some flexibility. The revocable living trust, that's you have complete flexibility. You can make changes to that at any time. You can change the beneficiaries, the trustees. It's a little different with the irrevocable asset protection trust. Um, but that's the one that actually protects the assets. So going back to your question, most people get sued personally. Um, 
I shouldn't say that, but a lot of lawsuits happen personally. They don't go after the business or the principles of the company. And that's why we have this in place for our clients. I see. And I think you actually already answered the last question. Do I have to set up a trust in the same state that my corporation is in? And then is there a better state to set up a trust? So if you want to um, yeah, no, I will, because we actually set up a lot of Wyoming and Nevada corporations and LLCs. And then our clients will either headquarter their operation here or we'll foreign file them to do business in their home state. So most, a lot of our clients don't actually have their corporation or LLC set up where they live. Again, the revocable living trust will be set up and um, for the language of their home state. The, the asset protection trust that we set up would be unique to Nevada and Nevada does offer the most asset protection for this type of trust. So we only will set that up here in the state of Nevada where our company is located. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to add or say before we move on to uh, John Rotter? Well, we're talking about business owners here. And I think one thing that's very important as the owner of my company, you, behind me, you'll probably see several corporate record books. Uh, the reason why we have those record books on our shelves is to help our clients do their, their minutes of their meetings, their director meetings or shareholder meetings. If they're an LLC, their annual meeting minutes, because what we're talking about right now is asset protection. So by having the company in compliance and making sure that the corporate veil is as strong as possible is very, very important. So that company and that corporation can do its job and protect you in the event of a lawsuit. Uh, so for business owners that have a corporation or an LLC, look into the requirements that you have for your state as far as those yearly meetings. Some states are very simple. For example, in Nevada, an LLC is required to do two annual meeting minutes. It takes 30 seconds to do. Um, other states are different. So take a look at that. And if you ever have any questions about that, I'm happy to help. Perfect. Okay. And I wanted to mention to everybody listening, uh, at the end of our webinar, we're going to have a phone number and an email on how to contact us if you wanted to speak with Brent or Nate or any of the other speakers and get more information. So, uh, Brent, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And uh, you, you be safe out there.